Okay, I'm, uh, my name's Christian Bean. I'm with the AWR group of National Instruments. Uh, you'll notice that uh, Malcolm Edwards is my colleague in the United Kingdom who uh, developed this. He's been working with AMCAD. Uh, Malcolm's our technical manager for all of Europe, actually, and again, resides in the UK. Uh, I'm local, uh, so it's a little more cost effective for me to come and uh, present uh, Malcolm's work. Talking about um, some of the challenges that face uh, PA designers, um, in particular gallium nitride PA designers. I should mention uh, Malcolm has a background in PA design, uh, as do I, so that's why I'm here in his stead. Uh, the design tools needed uh, for an effective design process, uh, specifically software design tools. Uh, model requirements, uh, what does the, need, the model need to supply the, uh, uh, the PA designer? And then I've got about uh, something like 30 slides, which I'll go through very quickly, which is just a quick run through uh, a typical design flow that we see from our customers. Uh, the idea is to make a first iteration of a design, a very first uh, cut of a design, which can then be used to capture a behavioral model and put into a system simulator, and you simulate with your uh, complex envelope waveforms, uh, simulate things like linearity, uh, very specific uh, to your application. So we're not trying to uh, present something that's a, a full two production design, just the first cut. Uh, continuing on. Uh, create design, again, that achieves us the specification and obviously stability uh, is a big part of this. Uh, if it's not stable, it doesn't do you much good no matter the performance you're able to achieve. And then, uh, of course, uh, thermal requirements are a big part of uh, today's PA designs. Design tools, uh, load pole analysis. We see uh, many, many designs done uh, just uh, essentially with load pole, uh, fundamental as well as harmonic load pole. And the field, it's an increasingly large part of uh, modern design flows. Uh, we're on the software side. Again, we make uh, design uh, software uh, for circuit level and system level designers, so uh, being able to quickly manipulate uh, large data sets and graph uh, large uh, amounts of data quickly and intuitively is very important. Uh, circuit synthesis, we see that a synthesis tool can be used to uh, not replace the designer, but uh, speed up the, uh, the entire design flow, uh, particularly in the initial uh, first cuts of designs. And then, of course, stability analysis, again, is very important. Uh, Build-in stability measurements uh, that are built in with a software tool or links to other specialized tools such as uh, AMCAD STAN. Model requirements. Um, obviously, if you're doing a waveform engineering, uh, access to the, uh, the so-called uh, internal drain current generator uh, is very important. Uh, access to the drain region, uh, access to the Gate node is important for uh, investigating, uh, as Malcolm here uh, says, uh, effects of the input parasitics and gain losses associated with any uh, stability circuits that are added, which uh, we'll see in just a moment. Uh, Nonlinear and linear transient, uh, sorry, transistor behavior, uh, accurate transconductance uh, modeling as a function of uh, gate to source voltage. It uh, has to be uh, something that um, captures memory effects, both thermal memory effects as well as semiconductor traps within the device itself. Uh, nonlinear capacitance modeling, uh, we see that um, uh, nonlinear uh, uh, drain to source uh, capacitance has uh, quite a large effect on device behavior uh, when used for high efficiency designs. And more and more, of course, people today are going for uh, maximum, maximizing efficiency. Uh, and then again, waveform uh, engineering like class B, F, inverted F uh, loading techniques uh, again mean that um, you're going to have to have a, your model very accurately capture the uh, nonlinear uh, uh, drain capacitance, you know, particularly when you start looking at the second and third uh, harmonics and doing load pulls. Uh, so the idea here um, <clears throat> was to do a first cut design, center frequency is 1.54 gigahertz. Uh, about 10 watts of power, uh, 50 megahertz bandwidth. Uh, try to max out the efficiency, gain flatness of a quarter dB, and we've got a 10 watt 
uh, nominal GAN device used for this. Uh, this is the, uh, the model, just to you know, cover some of the, uh, you know, the specifics. Uh, Nonlinear capacitances, which we just talked about, gate parasitics, uh, thermal modeling, so uh, thermal RC network node, uh, network model, uh, and then channel modeling. Uh, and then we started talking about the, uh, the actual design flow. Uh, so if we just look at the device when it's biased up, uh, 50 ohms at the input, 50 ohms at the output, uh, it's quite a uh, lot of uh, low band gain, uh, which means it's uh, obviously not stable. Uh, we have to go above four gigahertz even before the, uh, the small signal or linear uh, stability factor uh, K gets above one. Uh, so the first thing obviously to do is address that situation. Um, we put in a stability network at the gate and that brings down the low band gain uh, significantly, of course, and it gets into a, gets into a region where we're uh, stable, at least looking at the small signal stability parameters. The uh, trade-off there is, uh, of course, uh, some gain. Uh, gain loss observed from uh, either uh, S21 degradation or uh, gate drive drop. Uh, just showing the, the gain drop off there in our uh, band of interest, uh, a couple of dB, uh, a little more than 2 dB. Uh, so the next thing, we talked about uh, how important load pull is. Um, we see people take different approaches to this, but uh, the approach that we took was to first do a source, uh, source pull. Uh, so uh, 50 ohms at the drain, but uh, pull the, uh, the source impedance uh, with the stability network in place, you'll note. Uh, we pull the entire uh, Smith chart. Uh, again, leave the load as 50 ohms and uh, just use a lot of points so we're not uh, relying on interpolation between uh, measured points uh, too much and do that over a, a full power range. And this is just showing that, that this is done over a, a dynamic range uh, sweep. Looks like we're going a couple dB up to uh, 10 dBm of input drive and again capturing essentially the whole uh, Smith chart on the source side uh, when we do our source pull. Um, then at this point, we can uh, start uh, plotting uh, performance contours. Uh, the actual performance contours as well as the maximum uh, points at a specific power level. And this chart, uh, Malcolm, again, my colleague here, is showing that um, if we look at the, uh, uh, the best match there, that's the uh, circular red uh, uh, measurement. It doesn't move much with uh, drive level, and we're just indicating that uh, in this case, uh, it's essentially um, almost the same as just doing a simple conjugate match at the input. Uh, so it depends. Some designers will do this, just a uh, first cut uh, load pull to build confidence in uh, if they're matching the, uh, the source side of the part well enough. Others will just uh, start and do a simple conjugate match and use that uh, to define their uh, their first cut uh, uh, matching network on the input side. And all we're showing here is that for this device, it's almost uh, equivalent, just a small difference in the actual uh, impedances. And we see that we lost, uh, of course, uh, uh, two and a half, 2.7 dB of gain when we put in the stability network, but with the matching network now on the input side, uh, we gain that back and more. Uh, we actually have more gain now than we started with with the unmatched device once the, uh, uh, the gate side matching circuit is in place. Uh, so now we're starting to uh, look at the load side. We put our uh, impedances determined from the source pull into the tuner on the source side and we start to pull the, uh, the load side just at the fundamental. Uh, again, full Smith chart. Uh, we're going for a quick first cut uh, prototype and we're just showing that uh, in our software, at least, you can um, you know, pick a, a gamma point and it will show you all the, all the measurements uh, behind essentially each uh, gamma point that you did a load pull for. And so you can see the dynamic range uh, curves if you'd like, as well as the uh, performance contours on the Smith chart. Uh, PAE and load, those are of course the two uh, primary performance criteria uh, that we're trying to achieve. And we can define regions then with uh, specific measurements where we're uh, getting above that 38 dBm output power goal as well as uh, PAE uh, up to an exceeding 65% uh, efficiency. 
and that can be defined at uh, a, gain, a specific gain compression point if you'd like, uh, instead of a particular input power drive level uh, or a particular output power uh, level as well. Uh, let's see, so now we've got, um, uh, if I actually go back, let's go back. Uh, we're able to uh, then just um, put in the uh, source and load uh, impedances defined from uh, uh, the source and load pole and just verify that we're getting the performance we need from the, from the part, uh, plot swept performance uh, for uh, power efficiency, gain, et cetera, as a function of dynamic range and just verify that, uh, you know, the device models giving the performance we were seeing from uh, from the load pole. Uh, now uh, we have, um, of course, our impedances defined just with uh, uh, the idealized tuners. Uh, so now the next step is start to uh, synthesize realistic uh, matching networks, uh, both for the load and the source. Uh, if we do this, uh, starting with the load side, uh, we. Uh, define what components we want to consider when we do our synthesis. In this case, uh, Malcolm is actually going for a distributed match, so he's just picking um, ideal transmission lines uh, and not selecting any lump components. How many uh, matching sections would we like to consider, and et cetera. Uh, then essentially we, uh, yeah, we can also uh, set limits for any uh, elements, so for instance, if you've got a uh, you know, high power device with a large flange and you want the first uh, element that that part sees to be a wide uh, transmission line, uh, you can put that in as a stipulation with uh, the parameter limits. And again, we're not going for a manufacturable design this first cut, but just something to uh, be a quick prototype and then feed into the AMCAD vision system uh, to create a a behavioral model for system simulations. Uh, let's see, uh, yes, default settings uh, on the uh, synthesis for uh, the DC and bias feeds. Uh, in our software, the goals are set up directly from the load pole data, so there's no need to put in actual impedance points, just put in performance criteria. Uh, you can see we've got the 38 dBm of power, I believe, and the 65% efficiency. And uh, yeah, so that's the uh, 40 dBm of output power. And we synthesize our networks. Uh, they're automatically exported back into the native uh, microwave office or the main uh, design environment. Uh, you can uh, sort on uh, uh, cost, optimization cost, number of components, uh, et cetera, and decide how many networks you'd like to export and then continue working with those networks. Uh, so we've decided on a, an output network and we replaced the uh, idealized tuner with that uh, network, put in uh, capacitors for uh, DC drain bias. And we're essentially all set on the output side, uh, verify, verify performance, excuse me. And then for the gate side, <coughs> since we're just going for uh, essentially a conjugate match to optimize uh, the gain uh, with a stable uh, performance with a stable device. Uh, source pole contour suggests that the input can be treated as a linear problem as we saw before. Uh, so we're just going to uh, optimize essentially a conjugate match on the gain side. I would tell the synthesis tool to optimize for uh, 20 dB return loss or better. Uh, we get our network, uh, we decide which one we like the best. Uh, take care to address any uh, DC bias concerns or blocking caps and whatnot. And we've got our first cut uh, device model, at least, or our, our model with the first cut input and output matching networks. Uh, we're getting over the 10 watts of uh, power, and uh, I think the efficiency is, uh, yes, above 64%, and we see the uh, gain versus PN curves there on the bottom. Uh, so at that point, we can start looking at the, the drain node, uh, look at the uh, dynamic load line, look at the actual uh, voltage and current 
uh, waveforms at the drain node itself, since we have access to that via the device model, and uh, pick and choose where we'd like to plot things in terms of the dynamic range curve uh, just with a marker. Uh, so in conclusion, uh, once again, um, we weren't going for a state-of-the-art design uh, or a manufacturable design, something uh, rather that is just a viable test, uh, the GAN device model itself, uh, something then to take to the next level of modeling uh, via AMCAD vision uh, to be used in VSS, that's our system level uh, simulation tool. And uh, again, we just wanted to provide a quick overview of uh, the way we see this being done in the field by our customers uh, with our software. Uh, we do provide a versatile load pull uh, simulation system, as you can see. Uh, also, network synthesis for uh, input and output matching network. Uh, very quick synthesis tool to speed up design flows. And I think that is it. So back to AMCAD. Yep. Okay.